she wants a young American. It's all right. She wants a young American. Okay, so um, we are Katrina and Sam McIntosh from Edinburgh. Um, I have been an absolutely lifelong Bowie fan. Not quite, maybe since I was about 12 year old. A friend, his brother gave me the Hunky Dory cassette tape and I played it and went, wow, just loved it. And at that time, Starman also appeared on top of the pops with the, uh, the famous film and I was hooked. Yeah. That was it. It was finished. You know, I'm a music fanatic. I have four and a half thousand vinyl albums. I have over nine thousand CDs. But but the music is there, right? But Bowie is there. Yes. Uh, it's just completely different. So yeah. actually, the, our story was that um, I had a girlfriend in another town. Katrina had a boyfriend in another town, and she was coming home in a bus. It's quite amusing. Katrina had a cassette player, an old fashioned cassette player, the flat ones, the mono ones, and she was playing a carpenter's record on it, which was called Please Mr. Postman. The cassette got stuck in the machine, so she shook it, right? And it wouldn't come out, so she shook it again, and the lid opened, and it flew out and landed on my lap on the yes. other side of the bus. And this, Next again, week. This was in 1975. Yep. Next again, week. This was. Um, she got on the same bus, came straight up and says, what, is, what was your name again? I said, I didn't give you my name, but I'm called Sam. And, and it was from it. then. And we've been together ever since. So it'll be 50 years next year. Oh, we're together yeah. and we've been married 44 years. So I had always been a Bowie fan and Katrina loved the Edinburgh Zone Basic Rollers. At that time, and, yeah. Um, Bowie lasted, the basic rollers didn't. And we've came kind of through a life with, with collecting Bowie stuff and I collect everything and get my hands on that I can afford. Yes. And um, you know, one of the biggest events in our life was the, um, we lived in a flat right in the centre of Edinburgh. Murrayfield Stadium was a 10 minute walk from our house. And Bowie, in 19, on the 28th of June in 1983, bought the series Moonlight Tour to Murrayfield Stadium Murrayfield. on my birthday. Oh my it birthday. was amazing. Um, it poured with rain all day, but when Bowie came on, the rain vanished. Yes. You know? and Brightened up our we world. Had a, we had this <laughs> fabulous day. Um, moments that you never forget, though, to do with that is that we were, we'd seen a group called the Thompson Twins. We'd also seen another band called Ice House. And um, we were waiting on Bowie coming on, and the stage would be here. We were on this side of the stage. Yes. And the ramp that he walked up was on the left. And he came at the bottom of the ramp, but nobody could see him apart from the, it was a rugby stadium and nobody could see him apart from the people here. And they were going absolutely mad. And the rest of the audience were like, what's happening? Yes. And then he appeared at the top in the whole place, over 65,000 people screaming. So you can just imagine the noise, but I've, I've seen him a couple of times since then. Um, I got backstage um, through a friend, John McCardo. Um, he got me managed to get me backstage at the uh, reality tour in Glasgow, but I got caught and flung him off. I got caught and chucked back out again. So <laughs> I, never, I never actually got to meet him. But yeah, and then um, I think through me playing Bowie a lot, Katrina became yes. a really big fan as well. And uh, I know have music. I have children that are Bowie fans as well. And um, possibly our grandchildren will grow to that music <laughs> as well. <laughs> but we came, um, we came straight from, straight from a situation of being this, this big Bowie fan and going through life as Bowie to one morning. My son came charging, he didn't come charging up the stairs. I'll tell you the two stories. In 1977, my dad, came charging at my bedroom at home and said, Bowie's dead. It's 1977, right? And while I was taking this information in, he had gone and he came back five minutes later and said, I made a mistake, it was Mark Bolan. <laughs> it's not funny, but he got mixed up. He got <laughs> completely mixed up. So coming right back up to just recently, we were in our bed at half past six on a morning. 
yeah. and a phone call came from my son. Dad, you need to get out of bed. Bowie's died, and that was it. Yeah, that was a whole. But um, there's such sadness. a great body of work there that he didn't really die because he's in everybody's yes. memories forever. And there's so many things there. But and his know, music will live on forever. To the next generation, to the next generation, there's nobody like David Bowie. Well, and there never, ever will be. He's a Beethoven of his day. Um, the V&A are very astute to realise that how important Bowie was musically, culturally, you know, and on all the things he did. And because of that, I, st I think that people in 200 years will still look back and look at the, 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 the impact, what yes. he actually did. This is why the V&A next year are opening a, a museum devoted to David Bowie. Yes. Um, which will be absolutely great. But we have lots of stories and keep you here all day. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> the, um, I, I collect prolifically. I buy all sorts of things. I, I, I buy albums. Uh, you know, the, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, the, <clears throat> There's a, there's a box set called Sound and Vision, which you can buy in America, you can buy it here. It comes in different boxes in UK and America, but there were 350 special box sets made in a wooden box with a letter from David in them, right? And it was four CDs, a booklet, the yeah. full works. I was looked for one of these for ages. And this guy put one on, I'm not gonna tell you how much it was, but this guy put one on during lockdown, and we weren't allowed to go out during lockdown. And um, as quick as I could have a look at it on eBay, it disappeared again. So I sent him a message and said, look, we really, I really wanted that box set you had. So there's only 350 in the world. So you think, I really wanted that signature, signed letter from David and everyone. And he said, I'm sorry, I've decided to keep it. So I got a phone call about three weeks later, I said, I've decided to sell it. I said, well, I don't want to bid for it. Tell me how much you want for it. And he said, that's how much I want for it. Okay. And I said, yeah, I'll take that. He said, I don't want to post it though, because it would get broken because it's glass. Glass, ah, yeah, okay. glass and case. It's a wooden box with glass. Yeah. Beautiful. And he said, I don't want to post it because it'd get broken. So he lived about, I think he probably lived about 60 miles away from us. And he lived, we live in the central Scotland. He lived in the north of Scotland. And what was decided that we, we would meet during lockdown in a car park. Halfway. <laughs> Halfway, which was McDonald's. Yes. And it was like, there was like this drug deal, you know. Yeah. I said, I've got a white car. He said, I've got a green car. So we met, we drove in opposing ends of the car park, masked up and walked to the centre of the car park. To exchange. Exchanged, exchanged money and goods, got back in the car and came back down the road again before the police caught us. And that was, that was our lockdown. That so that's the only yes. the time we really broke lockdown. But um, it was, it's but a, it's fabulous, a fabulous item. You wanted that, didn't you? You were desperate to get that. I've only seen two of them. And one came for sale in New York. And a friend of mine, actually, because of the, the case of it getting damaged in transit, he flew to New York to pick it up on a, on a flight and carried it back again. But I managed to get one off this guy. Yeah. Um, and just, so we were so happy, weren't Yeah, we? just really, really nice to get something that you've been looking for for such a long, long so time. So cherished. Um, I, I collect prolifically, but I only buy things, I don't pay over the odds. I only buy things that I know if I can buy it, I could sell it for the same price tomorrow. A lot of people pay ridiculous money for Bowie things, and they really do. And you just know that that is never going to be worth that again, you know. But yeah, and everything I see, I bought a couple of things here. Um, I trail around the junk shops. I always find things, don't I? Oh, yes. Yeah, I always find all just the Just that the house pieces. is a bit bulged with all the music. Yeah. But you know, running out of cupper space. <laughs> but we have we have work in progress. We have four children, yeah. and we now have a two spare bedrooms, right? But what we've got now is I've been given a room. But the problem is, I've been working on it for two years. <laughs> just haven't it's had a, the time. It's, it's going to be it's going to be done as a music room. Um, there's a projection system going into it. There's a good one of my good sound systems going, and then I'll be able to show off a lot of my Bowie stuff that I have because yes. I've got I've got stuff, but I've got stuff under beds and cupboards and drawers and all kinds of stuff. You know, don't get me wrong, I know where it all is, but it's everywhere. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and this, you know, if you look. Um, I, I will, I'll sit down and give any piece of music a trial. I, I, I'm very, the mood takes me. One day in the car, I might listen to Led Zeppelin. Another day in the car, I might listen to Beethoven. 
Another day, I might listen to Edward Elgar, Elgar but then the other day, it, it might be something like, um, you know, the Foo Fighters or something like that. But music's music. And if you give everything a whirl, you'll get to yeah. like it. And you, because you were very, you were very kind of set in your ways on music. And mm -hmm. my, I've been in charge of my children's musical education. And because of that, my children like, People like the Kinks, um, they like people like the Beatles, they like Bowie, they like Zide Zeppelin, all kinds of things. Had we left the Katrina, it would have been the basic rulers and David Cassidy. <laughs> but the, uh, oh, and Donny Osmond. Oh, yeah, yeah, Don, <laughs> Donny Osmond as well. We, we forgot about Donny Osmond. Yeah. But, you know, there's so much. I, I, a, lot of, a lot of Bowie fans are very, very, they won't listen to anything else, which is, I find a bit strange. There is so much great music there, you know. Um, you pick up a piece of music and, you know, and music, you know, Felix Mendelssohn visited Fingal's Cave in the Hebrides and wrote a, sort of, and wrote a piece of music about it. And you think, it's a bit like Bowie. Where did yes. that come from in yeah. his head? You know, but Bowie visited places and wrote these pieces of music. And then you get people like Felix Mendelssohn visits Fingal's Cave and then has this piece of music in his head that he writes for that. And that's the difference between normal people. That's the difference between us and them. We would visit a place and go, that's nice. They would visit a place and be inspired to do something about it and write this song, mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, look at Bowie's body of work. Uh, the movies, the sound, everything. But then, you know, there's nobody quite like him, but there are people who are very, very good at what they do, but they didn't have that cultural impact that he had. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the clothing. Mm -hmm. And clothing. what I also find as well is that Bowie fans, um, they're, they're, they're very, they're lifelong. You don't really just dip in and become a Bowie fan for real and go back out again. Once you're a Bowie fan, you you kind of hooked and reeled in, and you yeah. you yeah. kept there. You remained in that, you know. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you kept there. You're Absolutely. drawn into it all. Yeah, Absolutely. and you know. And you you just need to look at the amount of people that have turned up for this from from places all over the world, for somebody who who's been dead for four years, yeah. and it goes on for a long time. <laughs> you better tell that we come in. <laughs> David coming in for a listen. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and you know I. And I'll tell you another thing is as well, there's, and Katrina will agree with us, there's a great friendship between Bowie fans. There's a great friendship between Bowie fans. I've met so many nice people because of, yes. of, of my, my love of Bowie. And you know, the people are very generous as well. I'm a collector. I have a major, major collection, right? And you, somebody says, another Bowie story, and this is a really sad but lovely story. Yes. I run a Bowie, uh, a Bowie fan page called the David Bowie Appreciation Society. Um, and I meet a lot of people through that as well. I got a message from um, a, a gentleman in London who said, I have five 1970s David Bowie scrapbooks. Do you want them? I said, well, look, these are valuable and they are. I said, you need, how much do you want for them? He says, no, you don't understand. I'm asking you if you want them. I'm not asking if you want to buy them. I said, well, yeah, I, I would definitely take these, but why are you offering to me? He says, I've been following your posts on Facebook for a long time. You love them. He said, I can tell that if I gave you these, these would be looked after. I said, well, you're absolutely correct there. So we were on holiday in Wales. And when we got home from Wales, there was this parcel, this big parcel that came. And uh, there was eight, five 1970s scrapbooks. Now, bear in mind, these sell for a lot of money. They were original with all the press cuttings. And tickets. There's, there's, there's tickets in there yeah, as well. the shows. The tickets sell for 50 pounds each. People collect tickets. And there was this fabulous wealth of oh, 1970s yeah. Bowie in five different really old scrapbooks, which, I believe had been at his mum's house and being in the attic because when you opened the box, you could you got that musty got smell a from them. you know, and dust. What what happened is I phoned him and said, "Look, these are fabulous. What you? Know, I I need to know the story behind them." He said, "I'll tell you the story." He says, "What happened is my younger brother was a Bowie fan, a real, real Bowie fan at university, and he graduated in 1982." And him and his friend went on a, a road trip to Canada. They arrived at the airport. Half an hour later, they were in a car smash and both of them died. And these, these had been taken away 
they had put, been put in an attic and they've been left. Left for all these and years. Now, it tells you that somebody is quite astute to look at my posts about Bowie and the things I say about him to say, these are my brothers, you'll look after them, you know. And what she did, because she took every bit of sellotape mm -hmm. off carefully. Yeah, the sellotape is all hours on coloured, him. discoloured. And he spent hours and hours to put it back together. In the original, back on the original paper. The bits of sellotape. You know, held them all back together again and put them all back together. Took ages, but you done it. Yeah, but I'm doing all the talking. Do you want? Uh, have we got time? Are we okay for time? I'm okay. Do you want to say anything else? It's uh, your turn now. Just, <laughs> I just love David Bowie. You know, it's such an inspiration to the whole world, and truly missed. But he's up there watching everybody, and he's keeping an eye on everybody, and the music will be played on forever. Why? Do, do you not think the world's a mess since he died? When David dies. When David, when, since David died, do you not think the world has become a real mess? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it is. It's, it's, it's obviously coincidental, yeah. but since David what died, it's, being, it's become a very strange world. It really has, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. But um, we, we're very buoyant, you know? There's always something new to look at. There's always yeah. something new to go. Yeah. And um, we, I think that, you know, we, we lived a life... Um, we are, I'm 66, Katrina is 67. Um, mm -hmm. we're, young, we're, we're young people, yeah. we are. We've got old bodies um, but young we've got, minds. We've, we've got creaky bones, but that's, that's all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people say to me, what keeps you young? I said, well, people music. like music and people like Bowie yeah. and things like this. You'll yeah. come in here to meet people. Enjoy life. And enjoy you know. life, because we're, we're, we're out every weekend. Yep. And uh, I, every time we pass a record shop, I, have, I need to go uh -huh. here. It's got to go and have a look. I mean, oh. Just in case. Just in case I find. But um, I do. I know to, you do. We went to Glasgow the other day and I found an album in a back street shop that I didn't have, a rare one, you know, but yeah. you always find things and you always just run along there. Um, one day I might sell my collection. Um, I, I don't know. I don't um, think you'll ever sell it, Sam. But you're always worried that, that because somebody doesn't realise what you've got, they just chuck it in a skip or something like yeah. that, you know? And so I've got my... Passed down to got, your grandchildren. My older child is briefed. My older son, who's uh, 35, he's been briefed. Yeah. And yes. uh, okay. to know that, listen, there's a lot of money there. Be very careful with that. But I do not collect for money. I do not collect for money. Um, I don't sell anything I have. Mm. The only thing I do is if I find something at a very reasonable price, I buy it and I give it to a friend who doesn't have it. Ah. Uh, yes. I just, I nice. do, but do it you know, come, when it comes to the end of days, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to sell a couple of things. There's things I can't give away. Um, if you're a Bowie fan, you will know that the, um, the original Mercury man who sold the world dress cover in pristine condition can mm. pick up between two and a half and three thousand pounds. I have one of them He's as got well. One of them. Um, and there's a, there's a great story behind that one as well. You know, we were 17 year old, we went to a place called Blackpool, which is not far from here, um, a seaside resort, and we had record stalls. And on the wall in a plastic sleeve was this man who sold the world dress cover. And I was 17, I had never even seen one, never realised what it was. And I said, what is that? He said, it's a man who sold the world, the original, and bought it down, had a look at it, and I thought, that's brilliant. Albums at that time were one pound sixty, right? This was five pounds, so it was three times the price of an album. So you've got to start thinking, is it worth it? So before I came home, I thought I'm going to buy it. I bought it. Now I've never played it because it's never I, been I, played. It's a it's a Mercury one. It's brand brand. It's brand new, still in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. I I already had the RCA re-release, the famous one in the black and white cover. I already had that, so I played that. I never played this other one. And I've got that sitting well looked after yep. and it's brand new and I wouldn't part with it though, unless I have to, maybe Fantastic. one day. Fantastic. Yeah, but I've got a few things like that. You just collect things, you know, and then you find it sad because my friend Ian, he has decided to buy his Bowie collection, sell his Bowie collection, which he has been doing. And the reason he's doing it is because there's only him and his mum. His mum doesn't live with him. She's very elderly, so she wanted much, much, maybe not much longer to go. He lives in a rented flat and he's worried that because he has nobody, a partner, nothing, um, he's worried that when he, when he eventually goes, that his landlord's going to come in and just clear the flat out. 
and all his bowie stuff will go. So he's, he's decided to make some money with it and enjoy the money while he's still yeah. alive. Yeah, yeah. But he's, only, he's a lot younger than me and you think, that's very strange. He's, a, he's 54, you know, and I'm 66. And I'm, not, I'm not selling mines, but he's selling his just in case. But, you know, I, I can keep you here all day, honestly. But, um, um, we'd, you know, the end result is we love Bowie. We love Bowie. Yeah, and always have. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, are you a fan? Yeah, of course. It's all right. She wants a young American.